I'm going to show how to add a bump map uh, surface effect to this parchment paper that I created previously. If you're interested in how I created the parchment paper, I have another video that shows how to do that. And I'll put a link to that in the description for this video. But for this one, I'm going to add a uh, sort of a rough surface to this. And I'm going to demonstrate how the filter works first. I'll explain some of the theory behind bump mapping, and I'll also explain how the equation is set up for this filter. So for this one, I have it set up as a procedural texture, and so I'm going to use the live, so I'm going to use the live filter here, and select procedural texture, and then go to the uh, first of all. I base this off of the function oils, which looks like that. I thought this filter would make a good effect, so I changed it into a lighting effect, and I call it Perlin Texture. So it looks like that as a lighting effect. If I zoom in on this, I'm actually going to change this to 40, and then we'll be able to see it a little better. Um, this one controls the magnification of it. This input controls the turbulence. And I'm going to bring up the depth a little bit so it shows up a little better. So if I bring this up, you can really see the depth to this now. So I'm going to, if I adjust the turbulence, if I bring this all the way down, it's just sort of a rough texture. And if I bring this up, it sort of stretches into this sort of fibrous thing, which is what I want for this effect. Um, smoothness, if I bring that down, it pretty much smooths it out. If I bring it up, it adds more texture to it. Then the depth, um, if I'm not seeing enough contrast here, I can bring this up to give it more contrast. If I bring this down, it will reduce the contrast. The last control, is the vector for the lighting angle and direction. So as I move this around, it changes the direction. And then if I go towards the center, it'll change the angle. So this would be like looking, the light shining straight at the page. And then this one is off to the side. So I usually just leave it off about here, um, something like that. Now, for, since it's a live filter, I can change the blend mode. And right now, I can't see any of my underlying parchment paper. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to change the blend mode. And um, I'm just going to look for one that looks good. So multiply doesn't look too bad. Color burn looks pretty good. Um, linear burn uh, is good. You can also try sometimes soft light or hard light uh, look pretty good down here or overlay but for this one I think I'm going to just do linear burn maybe a little bit too much um, but um, just for this demonstration I'm going to use that one now it's pretty intense here so I'm going to decrease this value to lighten that up a little bit um, I'll probably bring this one up to about 60 and I think um, I'll just change this angle a little bit make it a, not so far off to the side that'll increase the brightness a little like that then I can also turn change the opacity so I'll start with this all the way down and then gradually bring it up till I can start to see some of this texture coming in so I get uh, as much texture as I like. Now I can close this and the, this filter is applied applying that texture to this parchment. Okay. Um, if I wanted a copy of that I could go to layer and merge visible and now it's created a pixel layer that's a copy of that so I could save that um, like that or export it as a JPEG. I'm going to explain some of the theory behind how bump maps work. So to do a bump map, 
I first start out with the black and white surface. In this case, I'm using Perl Perlin Cubic, which makes sort of a noisy surface. I'm modulating that with this directional um, S-curve noise. So it'll be a directional noise, which I can uh, takes a vector input, which will have both X and Y components, and adds it to this other vector. Turbulence is multiplied here. I'm using five octaves and then the smoothness factor. Okay, so that's my basic function, and that'll give me a black and white function. When I'm going to create a bump map, I'm going to look at that surface, and uh, areas that are white, those are going to be close to you. Areas that are black are further away from you. Going from black to white ranges from 0 to 1. The next step is to try to figure out what direction the surf, how the surface is changing in slope. So if I look at a surface, um, you could create something called a normal vector. So I'm going to use this as my surface, and then a normal vector will move along this surface and change direction, and this normal vector could be pointing in a lot of different directions. In order to make use of the normal vector, you need to convert it into its component vectors, x, y, and z. And then, for bump mapping, those component vectors are stored in an image. And in the image, the x component is stored as the red color, the y component as green, and the z as blue. To figure out a component vector for the x component, you choose a pixel, x, y, and then look at the pixel to the left of it and the pixel to the right of it and take the difference between those two. Now if this pixel were 0 and this one were 1 we'd have a negative 1 and we want our answer to be in the range from 0 to 1 so we have to sort of scale it so we could do it was negative 1 if I add 1 to that that'll go up to 0 so that'll fix that problem but now if this one is 1 and this one is 0 and I add 1 to it, it'll be 2. So it'll have a maximum of 2. So to fix that, I divide this whole thing by 2. Now, as I zoom in and out, the um, intensity of the slope may change, and I want to be able to control that. So I'm multiplying by this factor b to, to increase the uh, intensity of the texture. For y, I look at a pixel above and below the current pixel and do the same scaling on that one. Then for B, just set, uh, it's always set to a 1. So I have my X encoded as the red component, the Y is encoded as the green component, the Z is encoded as the blue component. Z is always 1 because it assumes you're looking straight at the object and you can't see the back of the object from where you're looking. The next step is to use the debump function in Affinity Photo's procedural texture filter to convert the red, green, and blue uh, components of the pixel into a bump map. Right? Then we take the vector control, and that gives us both angle and direction, and we apply something called a vector dot product. And the dot product of the bump map and the light vector will give you your bump lighting effect. Okay, so I'm going to go over the, the next part is the equation. So to create this effect, I first set up four different coordinate vectors. Um, Rx minus one, Rx plus one, Ry minus one, Ry plus one, and then these are just R, Y, and R, X. I scale all of these by A over W, and then I put them into my function, which is Perlin cubic in this case. I'm also using it here, so V1 shows up here and here. This is the noise function. And then uh, I subtract off V2, the Perlin cubic with the V2 X, Y coordinates. And then this is the red component, so there's a comma. This is all of the red component. And then I go to the green component, there's a comma there, and then the blue component is just one, so that's easy. 
and then um, the V comes from my uh, control, custom input control. So that's the whole program, and it gets sort of long, but um, that's how you have to do it. Okay, so I'll go back to the, I'll turn this one off, go back to the filter again, and this time I'm going to change this, I'll put it at 30. I'm going to increase this and make a rougher texture with turbulence like that. And I could change the angle of this like that. And just to zoom in. See what it looks like and it just stays on so I don't have to apply it but if I did want to get a snapshot of that I could do a layer and merge visible so if I thought I needed more texture I could go to this one I wanted less, I could go to that one. Okay, let me know if you have any comments or questions, and thanks for watching.